And once again, back here at the pink table, we're just going to knock them out because we're here two days until the Serie A season starts. Uh, we're going to be going over Salernitana and Roma. Okay, so let's take a look at that. Welcome back to the pink table. Uh, we are going to be looking at Roma and Salernitana on our pre-Serie A season preview of each team. Uh, there's a transfer market still going on, so these teams are changing. So don't know how relevant the content will be in a week or so, um, especially from Roma, who are spending a lot of money. So, Elaine, uh, let's look at the Roma team and tell me what you think. Well, yeah, um, as a Roma fan, you cannot be but impressed with the way that the Friedkins have taken their approach to the, this new transfer market. Um, it was a signal of intent to bring Mourinho in as soon as he became free. Um, and um, despite... The early press conferences that would have suggested that he was going to assess the team at his disposal and then maybe start investing from next year. The team has started spending a lot of money in recent weeks. Um, and I think they actually classify at the moment, besides the fact that we're Italy's top spender, we're actually fifth top spender in Europe. Um, if you take into account um, the Brian Reynolds deal and the Banyas deal being finalized as well, I believe that the total amount spent by Roma at the moment is 98 million euro. So money is being spent in this team and it is looking very exciting. Um, Patricio has been brought into goal uh, to add a bit of experience and security. He hasn't looked the greatest in preseason, being honest, but I don't think we can get worse than Paul Lopez. That's just my take. Uh, Karsdorp is just becoming a better and better player day in, day out and becoming very consistent. I think since the birth of his children, his headspace has changed a bit and he's become a lot more professional in his footballing life. Um, expect Mancini and Smalling to take up that centre-back pairing and the left-back position. We've got Calafiori down here as I think he was expected to be owning that position. But with the recent addition of uh, Matias Vigna, I think we should be seeing a lot more of him um, starting out on the wide left of the defence. So what do you think of Roma's current defensive setup? Yeah, I think... Um... It's pretty similar to last year, besides the goalie and um, with Vigna coming in. I know Smalling's just got injured again, uh, if I'm not mistaken. So I think if uh, that carries on reoccurring, um, it all depends on Ibanez, how he comes into the team. Uh, last year in the beginning, he was good. And then he seemed sometimes to be a bit distracted. But it's the same defense as last year. Like, minus uh, Spinazzola, which is, yeah, a, Spinazzola, which is a, weaker, a weaker thing there. Uh, uh, has looked good so far, but he's not Spinazzola. Yeah, he's not um, with regards to the Smalling injury, um, from what Mourinho said yesterday, is it isn't really an injury. It's more like a, a preventative measure to ensure that there is no injury. Uh, so he's not going to play him because he does want to ensure that Smalling doesn't have any problems of this nature. So let's see how true yeah. that lands up. So here. I think here yeah, it largely comes down to Mourinho's tactics because it is the same defensive last year, which was okay it wasn't great mm. but uh yeah so there's no additions there there's actually a subtraction uh the goalie is definitely better so yeah it's the same defense it all comes down to Mourinho's tactics yeah then uh moving up to midfield at the moment we do have Veritu and Cristante locking down that midfield with Pellegrini slightly ahead of them expect to see Zagnolo out on the right with Mkhitaryan out on the left but if you ask me Mkhitaryan is probably going to lose his position a few weeks into the season to Shomorodov. He's looked incredible. Uh, he will be starting out at front for Roma for the upcoming games um, until Tony Abram is ready to, uh, Tammy Abram is ready to take up his position. Um, so see Shomorodov in attack for the few weeks. Um, and I think that that's going to be enough to convince Mourinho that he should be the player out left. And if you've got Shomorodov, Zaniolo and Abram attacking at a defense with that, that pace and that size, I think it could be very, very exciting. Um, the only real question mark is who's going to take that extra defensive position in midfield. Uh, Cristante is there now, but we do know that Mourinho is looking for another midfielder. Um, a lot of talk that Roma has met with Ramadani a few times about Zakaria. Um, apparently, we do have a deal in place with him, but we're sort of testing the waters elsewhere. Um, Anguissa from Fulham would be one of my choices. Uh, he said yes to a Roma transfer. Fulham has said yes to a Roma transfer, uh, even broken up in pay over years, so that would work. The only issue is that the player wants quite a hefty salary, even though he's in championship right now. 
So Roma looking at other names, Sabitzer's involved, Palinia's involved. Um, but yeah, Roma looking to spend at least another 25 to 30 on a defensive midfielder as well. Yeah, interesting. Um, yeah, so from this team here that we see lined up, the only addition here is Abram and Rui Patricio. So money being money is being spent, but mainly I think the main player there was Abram. Uh, which was the majority of the money there, and I think probably to add more depth to the team. And uh, Shemiribov, which we're not seeing, which was exactly. a hefty 20 million. Uh, and with that saying, like I, I feel, I know, listen, obviously he'll change that. Mkhitaryan, I think, is needed in this team to bring that creativity and balance, but uh, Mourinho does play very counter-attacking football, so who knows. Um, but yeah, it'll be interesting to see how this team evolves, and specifically with Mourinho, I think it adds a bit of excitement as well to Roma and see what Roma is capable of. Yeah, so, uh, with Roma playing uh, their first conference league game tonight. Exciting yeah, exactly. is building. So, in regards to approval, I think the fact that uh, Abraham's in, uh, he's younger than Jekyll, I think that's an improvement. Like, Jekyll is great, but I feel that Roma looks more of a dynamic and exciting team. So, for me, I think the stamp of approval is good. Um, but, and Patricio is a huge improvement. Yeah. More than anything, as a as a fan who really knows the ins and outs, the biggest stamp of approval for this Roma team comes with the amount of dead weight that uh, we've managed to get out of the door this transfer market. That's been huge for us. Um, I wouldn't call Jack or dead weight, but it's a big contract off of the books. And if we can get a few more of those off of the books, Roma will be looking good in the next few years. Okay. Good. So let's move on to Salernitana. Um, so just to add here, uh, the the normal imagery that we have for the lineups uh, we couldn't actually get Salernitana as the software that we use for that can't actually find most of the players so we just pulled this from the Gazetta right now so they can't really play with a 3-5-2 I'm not very familiar with Salernitana I know some players that they brought in but as you can see they're Belik, Bogdan, Stramberg, Jomber in the defense and in midfield there's some names we know they have two Koulibalis they have Obi, Ruggeri and Kechirid, Kechirida if I'm not mistaken. And then up front, they have Bolnazzoli and Juric. So there's a few things that are changing here. Yeah. Um, they are looking to bring in Simi. from uh, As of this morning, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah. So he's already there. He's doing his medical. So that's awesome. I think that's a great addition. Simi did really well last year. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm got my hands itching, waiting to add him to my Fanta uh, Calcio team. He's still not available on the list of players, but I keep on checking daily because I want him in my team. Yep. And uh, they're also in talks today with uh, Musacchio, who was uh, Zvincolato from Lazio. So I think that would be a great addition for Salernitana as well in the back. I think they're just in uh, salary talks there, but I think that would be that would be a good buy there. So that's what I know of Salernitana. Um, from the, what I've seen, I don't see Salernitana staying up in A next year after next year. But uh, what do you think about this team, Elaine? Okay, my knowledge about these players is quite limited as well. I know that they picked up Belic in goals on a free transfer this year. He's a decent goalkeeper and he brings a lot of experience. Um, the defense is physical, but I don't know if they've got the quality for Serie A, to be honest. Uh, Obi is a, a quality player in midfield and we've seen him play at a number of Serie A clubs from Chievo to Torino. And he can definitely hold his own. This team gets exciting when you move towards the strikers. Uh, players like Di Tacchio, Funnily enough, we've actually got somebody who's subscribed to our fantasy team who's called his team Daie Di Takio. Di Takio is a player to watch. And uh, Di Takio in combination with Simi might be quite an exciting uh, an attacking pair. Interesting. Okay, so in regards to approval-wise, um, I'm, I'm sure they've improved from last year. I don't know if they're a team to watch. I don't know if they're going to be able to, but I feel that they're going to be kind of the Crotone of last year, unfortunately. I've got a funny feeling they're the the so-called whipping boys of the tournament, but uh, uh, hopefully we're we'll pleasantly surprised. But we've seen stranger things. Uh, Kiev landed up sitting top of the table the year they were promoted for a while. So we've definitely seen stranger things than Salernitana staying up. Uh, I think it's just going to d depend a lot on how much fight the players put in in those early part and the early part of the season before the pressure starts mounting. Okay, well, that sums up Roma and Salernitana. Um, we'll be pushing out the next video, which I think is Sampdoria and Sassuolo. Uh, we're getting closer to kickoff. Uh, very excited for that. Yeah, so if you haven't, please like and subscribe the pink table, this video, the whole bang shoot. 
And uh, also subscribe to the Fantasy League if you haven't already. Um, and thank you for watching. See you tomorrow at the Pink Table. <laughs>